All right, so this tutorial is about the fill button up there at the top. If we go ahead and tap on that icon, you see we've selected it. Now to get to all of the features, you go ahead and tap on it a second time. And you'll see that a lot like the brush, there are quite a few options that are preset if you would choose, if you want to choose one of those. There are some, some patterns, there are some preset colors, you have the option to go to a transparent color, or you can use the color wheel to uh, choose something to your liking. I'm going to choose a green color, maybe something, oh, that one. And the reason I'm going to choose that is that this um, picture that I've chosen is actually something that my older daughter did a couple of years ago. She was just messing around, and I'm pretty sure this actually started as a, as a blank something that she started adding things to. And using the, the toolbox up here, she used some of the filters to start messing around with it and spreading things out, swirling them. We're going to go through all of those later. But the point is, she came up with this kind of fun little doodah here, and I picked it for the fill because it's got nice, clear, demarcated edges with the black in between. So let's say that for whatever reason you have a photo and you want to change, say, this blue area right here to look green. Well, if you pick fill, you pick your green color, and then you tap it, it turns green. Super easy. Now, if you want to change, if you, well, here, we'll go back up and tap on fill again. And you can see that you can change the tolerance once again, so you can make it completely opaque or you can make it um, completely transparent or anywhere in between. You can also make change your tolerance. There's two ways to do this tolerance. You can uh, do it right here on the slider, and just like the other features, if you want to make it a very, very specific tolerance for whatever reason, just triple tap right there. One, two, three, and look at that. Let's say I was a really good graphic designer, which you can tell by now that I'm not, and I wanted it to be a very specific tolerance of 25. Go ahead and enter that, and it moves it directly there. The tile multiplier we will uh, look at in a moment. So let's pick a different color. How about a yellow? And I'm going to go in here and change another one. Now, another way to change your tolerance is if you hold down and just kind of slide a little bit, you'll see that the tolerance actually comes up down here at the bottom. And you can change it there as well. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. I'm happy with my tolerance where it is. So now, how fun is this? I can go in and I can change any of these that I want with any kind of pattern or color. Let's do a few more and then I'll show you the tiling. So, uh, actually, let's see, which one would be good? Let's look at this one that actually kind of looks like tiles. And I'm going to change one of these bigger ones over here to look like that. But you can see that it's actually quite large. So we'll go to the tile multiplier, and that just means that it copies it more than once. And we'll do another one. So you've taken, oh, cool, I did the background. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. That's all right, you can always undo what you've done by accident. I'm going to cancel. And if it had stayed, I would just do this undo button and redo it. So, but I was actually just trying to zoom up like this and I accidentally got the background. So that's kind of cool on this uh, tile multiplier. So you've got one that's really big, one that's really small. Let's go somewhere in between and do a third one. And you can kind of get an example of what that looks like. So when you are doing a fill and you've got a pattern, you can adjust the size of the pattern in what you're filling. Um, let's go ahead, because this is really easy to demarcate because all of these have very clear lines, let's go ahead and open one more photo, something that might be a little bit more uh, natural, I guess, and not so much just a, a drawing with really clear edges. Um, how about this one? Okay. So let's say that I want to change the color of the sky. 
Well, I'm really into pink skies. So I'm going to pick a nice bright pink color. I'm going to make that a little bit less solid. Now I'm going to go in here and go ahead and fill that sky. Oh, wait, why didn't that work to fill the whole sky? Uh, it's actually a tolerance issue for the most part. Anything that's a similar color to what you are doing uh, may get filled in if you're using that fill button. And so the tolerance is what changes that. What happened, and if you look really carefully, I'm going to undo this and you'll see that there's actually two different colors of blue. Uh, Jeff, who actually made this Udoodle app, is partially colorblind, so this would be hard for him to see. And for those of you who perhaps don't delineate colors quite as easily, it might be difficult for you to see. And I'm going to undo that, and you're going to see that the top part of that blue sky is actually a little darker blue than the, than the bottom part. So, um, and then if you look at the difference, say, between this blue over here on the right side and this blue over here on the left side, you're going to see it's two different colors. So let's change the tolerance. Let's make the tolerance a little less and see what happens. Oh, look. Barely did any of it because those are the pixels that it saw were that exact color of blue. I'm going to undo that. We're going to go back and we're going to maximize that tolerance and try it one more time. Oh, and almost all of the sky turned that nice pink purple color, fuchsia probably, only so did some of the mountain. So let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can get it just right. Oops, cancel, let's undo that again. And we're going to make the tolerance a little bit less. Let's see what happens. That's pretty close. So why is that mountain turning fuchsia as well? Let's look. Because the back of the mountain with the shadow on it is this is pretty close to the same blue as this guy. We'll do it one more time. You'll get the idea. I mean, I would have to mess with this a while to get it probably perfect. But you're getting the idea of how this uh, tolerance issue works. There we go. Okay, so the back of the mountain is no longer colored fuchsia. All of the sky wasn't colored that way either, but I'm going to go ahead and just tap it again. Right? And just fill in those little spots. I think, and this is where Jeff is better at this than me, is because he built these features so he knows every single one. But I think you can actually adjust the tolerance after you've added a spot. Hey, that looks cool. I'm always learning stuff. Let's maximize it. I like that. Um, one thing that I do, <coughs> And maybe this is just sort of a cheater thing. But let's say that I use the fill button and then there's these spots left, right? And it's really annoying to have to go in and zoom in and do every single one. I don't want to have to do that personally. So what I would prefer to do is go ahead and use the eyedropper tool, which we've already gone over in a past tutorial. Go back if you need to learn about that. Um, and then go to the brush. And I want that to be completely opaque. The size will probably need to be somewhat small. And I'm going to go in and just color it. It's the exact same color now as the rest of this guy. And I can get rid of all of these little spots a lot more easily. If you make it too big, then obviously when you start to color, you'll do things like, I don't know, coloring over that tree there. See if there's any more little spots. Oh, there's a few down here, so we'll just go ahead and fill those in. And, oh, too much, too much, too much. Fill those in. We're going to call that good just because I think it gives you an idea of how to use that fill button, the pick, and the brush all together.